I had to reshoot this portion of the video because my other video was corrupted. Uh, however, uh, when starting with the brand new bullet, uh, your first task is to figure out where that bullet's ogive meets with the lands of the rifling. Uh, there's several ways that you can do this. There's several videos that explain how to do it. I won't go into doing that. I did that off camera. Um, but essentially, uh, my base to ogive uh, at jam is 2.426 at the lands, and that would make my overall length at 3.080. Uh, however, since I'm using a magazine to feed the ammo, I'm at the mercy of my magazine length. When I first seat my first bullet, uh, I'm going to seat it to an overall length of 2.950, and I'm going to seat it a couple thousands uh, deeper, just so that way I get reliable feeding out of the magazines and the tip of the bullet isn't going to be dragging against the, the front of the magazine. Uh, once we get that seating depth, I'll measure the base to ogive, and then we can subtract that base to ogive from my original uh, base to ogive that I received at the when I jammed the bullet into the lands. Our next step is figuring out what our powder charge is going to be. I'm going to be using the Hodgkin's H4831 shortcut. I have so much of this powder because it's worked really well for me, uh, specifically with the Burger 170 and uh, the Nosler 170 grain. So I'm really comfortable with this powder. Uh, I have a lot of it and Barnes actually for thank them very much for this. You can go right to their website, choose the Barnes LRX 155 and the 270, scroll down to the bottom of the page and they have a spec sheet that you can download where they did their own in-house development, load development. And they're calling for 58.5, to 56.4 grains of the H4831. So that is what they recommend. I would highly recommend that you use this info or start with this info, especially if you have not used this powder before and this bullet before. I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit because I have, I'm really comfortable with this powder and I know how it performs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the upper end of what they recommend. So I'm gonna start at 56 grains and ideally I'd like to get to 58 and a half grains, but I, I don't know if that's gonna be possible or not. Uh, historically, I've had really good luck with 58 and a half grains. It's a really good mix of um, good velocity, good recoil, but it doesn't overwork the brass. I was noticing with this powder uh, that, that 59 to like 60, 60 and a half grain mark, especially when I was shooting the uh, Hammer Hunters, I was really overworking the brass and I was, I was prematurely wearing out their primer pockets. So, and over time, I kind of noticed uh, my group started opening up a little bit. So what I did is I backed my charge down to 58 and a half grains. And since then, everything's been a lot more consistent. So I know that this powder works really well with those heavier bullets, that 170 grain range. Um, I know that this powder charge 58 and a half grain works really well for that. So that's going to kind of be my ceiling limit. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get there, but by God, if I don't have any fresher signs at 57, 57 and a half grains, I might uh, bump it up a little bit more and, and see if I can't push the envelope a little bit. But I'm going to start at 56 and, and work my way up here. That went over three by a tenth of grain, not a problem. I'll just put it on back here. So what I've got going on for brass is I bought a bunch of this browning nickel plated brass right when I started building the rifle and these were the 175 Sierra Tip King Kings. Uh, so I've kept this and I'm reserving, I'm using this for the Barnes bullets. All my Winchester just regular brass I'm just keeping for my burgers. Everything's working really well for that so I'm just going to reserve the, the, the original brass, you know, this this type of brass for, for the burger bullets and I'll just use these this nickel plated stuff so uh, this has all been trimmed shoulder bumped uh, annealed and primed um, a little method to my madness here on the loading block what I've got going on is I've got five cartridges uh, per each powder charge so for example my 56 grains that I'm working on um, I've got five here Inevitably, when you first do a new, work up a new load and you want to shoot suppressed, you have to shoot that 
where I would highly recommend you shoot that initial load without any suppressor attached to the rifle. What this is going to help prevent is just in case this bullet isn't being stabilized correctly, um, it's going to prevent the uh, your, your suppressor getting struck by the bullet if the bullet's not you know exiting the end of your barrel uh, in a straight manner if it's not concentric. So save the headache of you destroying your expensive suppressor that you waited a year to get. Uh, just make a couple burner a, a burner cartridges to where you're going to shoot two or three at the target. Check to make sure that those the holes in the in your paper or your cardboard are completely round and they're not keyholed. And if they're completely round, uh, you can continue to attach your suppressor uh, and work up your load development that way if you choose to work a load development with a suppressor. Uh, also, I have five in one row. For initial load development, I like to do a three-shot group. That way I'm not wasting a bunch of, of components and it gives me a good idea you know, a good starting idea of how it's gonna, how the rounds are gonna group, and uh, what my standard deviation and extreme spreads are. Inevitably, sometimes I pull a shot, I flinch, and if I call that flinch, I like to have one or two extra on standby. That way, I can complete uh, that that group so I can get good statistical data. case overall length. Uh, so what I've got going on here, I've got the die, I've got the seating stem backed pretty far out because I don't want to overseed it. And so we're just going to get a light seat. So a really light seat and I'll just start working it deeper and deeper until I hit that 2.950 overall length and then seat it just a couple thousands deeper and then we'll get a base to ogive measurement to see what our, uh, our jump is, so. We're at 3.078, so we've got a bunch more to go. Point nine nine five, so we have about forty five thousandths left to take off. We're at two point nine four seven and a half so i think what we'll do is yeah so we'll start with that so what we'll do is we'll test fit this in our magazine Zoom you guys out a little bit here on that one. and looks like we get just enough clearance to where if we keep stacking those it should feed pretty smoothly so that bullet will come off there. That one springs up. And that one springs up. So I think what we'll do is, and I don't see any deformation on that point there. So that leads me to believe that 
they are not making contact. Maybe just a little bit there, but that's not going to affect anything. So we are pretty much right dead where we were maxed out. So let's take a... We're maxed out for a magazine length. I think that'll start there. So let's get a base to ogive measurement. Two point two nine five. Two point two nine six. Oh, there we go. All right, back to elementary math. Got a calculator. <laughs> uh, so we'll do this here with a three. Carry that. We are at three. One. So we have. 130 thousandths jump. And here, since we got it seated, this is how far the bullet is in there. So we are, we're pretty far in there. So that would make sense as to why they want us to start with such a lower grain weight because you're, that bullet's impeding that bullet or that powder space pretty far. Uh, so this is 56 grains. 56 grains. There's still some powder movement in there, so it's not it's not a compressed load and it's not completely full, so we've got room to work. Before we get into concentricity numbers, uh, I want to reiterate, I am loading these at one length at different powder charges, and we'll shoot for groups and extreme spread and standard deviation velocities. And once we figure out something that we like, we will go back and fine tune those numbers in that group with seating depth. So I'm not doing a bunch of seating depths right off the bat. I'm just picking one, which is pretty much our max case overall length for our max magazine overall length. And that's what we're going to start with. And then we will work for there to fine tune our loads. Okay, getting into concentricity numbers. Let's see how well this stuff starts here. That is five thousandths out of round, so not starting off very good. That one looks like it's two thousandths. That one's one thousandths, so that's a pretty acceptable. That one there is one thousandths. This one here should be pretty close to about a half a thousandths there. All right, that first one there was a little bit of an anomaly, but the rest of the four, those last four looked really good. So, uh, so far, okay, that is the initial loading process for this bullet. Uh, you'll see me at the range. Thanks.